All right, time for an update. Uh, it's been a few days, and I uh, thought I'd give you guys an update on what's going on. Uh, here's Robert's account, and I just had some trades that closed out for some profit. Uh, and this is the... Okay, so that's just updated. And closed out for $292. So that's pretty much a standard, standard basket. Um, and... I was hoping for a bit more. I actually had some off quotes at Oanda. Uh, I tried to close this basket at about 800, but uh, the off quotes caused me to not be able to close the trades. As you guys know, when some when price moves quickly uh, and there's a lot of volatility, it sometimes can be difficult to close out trades uh, when you want to. <clears throat> okay, so not a lot of profit this week. I mean, it's Wednesday, and I've, I've only had one closed basket. Just not a lot of opportunities because the markets. Uh, at least the pound, <coughs> excuse me, the pound has been trending pretty heavily, and I haven't gotten a lot of, of indications for pullbacks um, during during this week uh, until just recently, and uh, that's how this closed out. So the first trade was here after inside candle setup, and then I went on grid after that for 20 pips, and then was able to get the top here on the 20 pip grid before it started falling. Didn't fall enough, obviously. Uh, ended up closing out trades at this point. <clears throat> so not a bad place to close out, as you can see. It's it is a round number right there. Um, so I tried to close out a little bit lower than that, and like I said, off quotes on all my trades and at on Robert's account, and was unable to close out. And wait a, a little bit longer to see if this would to, to push down, and decided to close out when it came to the five minute uh, chart. So I went looked at the chart, five minute chart, saw an inside candle uh, that formed on the, on the M5 right at the whole number. It made me a little bit uncomfortable uh, of holding this, these, this basket longer. <coughs> so I actually ended up closing it out, uh, expecting maybe a pullback, even a, pull, a larger pullback potentially to retest the, the top level of 71.5 again. A 1.715, and so I didn't want to take the chance, and then closed up there. <laughs> so right now it's been jumping up and down around this this uh, 1.71 level. I do think it's gonna, it's more likely to fall because of this candle here, the on the M5, and how it it abruptly moved, um, giving maybe an indication that we could get. A larger pullback before what they're calling Big Thursday, which is uh, the interest rate decision and a bunch of other uh, UK news coming out that day uh, that should uh, give us hints into potentially the Brexit talks, the health of the the UK, uh, where things are going. Just a lot of information. So there could be a ton of volatility and movement uh, tomorrow, actually. Uh, so be very careful with your with your pound positions on all pairs, um, and make sure you have your expert advisors off, uh, and to wait for that news to really come out before you enter heavily on on your positions. All right. Uh, so I was able to get out of this, and it looks like it could be pushing back down on the downside. Like I said, I think it's more likely to go to go down here then push back up but it's again it's hard to it's hard to know all right so here is my personal account now this is a little bit different because uh, there was an inside candle uh, much earlier uh, set up much earlier on on my charts and the first one was right here so the inside candle set up there let me zoom in just a bit so you can actually see and let me shrink this down a bit. <clears throat> it's still really hard to see because of how much, how many candles we have in here, and also the grid. So let me remove the grid. All right, that's that's a little bit better. Still, let's move this, remove this for now. All right, so yeah, the inside candle. There was uh, one right here. There was also one here, but this one was the one that was taken. And it's not the best setup because it like I usually like it to uh, break the last high swing high level, and it was in here, but I still did like the resistance that was coming up at this at this point, 
and there was a good chance for this to push down. Well, you see that didn't quite happen, and it slowly but surely creeped up more, and then this candle was caused by Canadian dollar news that came out yesterday, and uh, some really negative numbers for the Canadian, Canadian uh, dollar, and it caused a 100 pip uh, candle. So just news going against me. For those that totally disagree that uh, <clears throat> trading is mostly fundamental, that is right, that is your hint right there. That people are looking for the health of these currencies based on the living conditions in these countries. If news comes out that's negative, then it doesn't matter where, uh, technically where the Canadian, uh, the, the pound Canadian dollar is. If the living conditions or the news is likely worse, then most people will, will probably react um, against the Canadian dollar if the, if the news is, is, is negative. Now, there are some instances where uh, where the analysts are wrong or and there is negative news that comes out on the Canadian dollar and it actually does the Canadian dollar gains value that's that's something that's possible and uh, usually there's underlining circumstances in that in those cases uh, where there's a bigger picture involved uh, where if there's negative news uh, then sometimes traders can react as you may not expect <clears throat> in this case they acted as, as expected, and because there was no other way of looking at it, the overall picture was negative, and the news numbers were negative on top of that, causing this to push up. Uh, so, I'm gonna. I always have a lot of people disagree with me that they say that you can, uh, you can be just a technical trader or just a fundamental trader, um, but I still think that you need to have both. Uh, I guess you have to watch for both. You can't just do one or the other. So the argument is that if you're a technical trader, that you can develop a system that can work through the news, and that's similar to how my system how my system works. Um, I, is that I don't typically turn it off uh, before or even after the news. I just let things ride, and most of the time my trades are able to. Uh, last throughout the news and can can handle the news as well but <clears throat> I do watch for the news and sometimes I will turn it off and, and turn it on my expert advisor uh, to wait to see what happens and I do have a filter in place that helps with large candles like this uh, but still you've got to be watching that news because some big events could cause unexpected uh, reactions all right, so this candle here that I've mentioned to you about with the Canadian dollar in the news, uh, I did have my uh, filter in place. So my typical 20 pip grid, which was here, you, you see the, all these trades are 20 pips apart, and then this one is actually 50 pips apart, and that's because of my filter my filter that I had in. So this one was 50, and this one right here was 30 pips, and then it went back to 20 after that. Uh, so the, vol the higher volatility area caused my grid to widen um, because of how large the candles were uh, in that area of, of price. All right, so that that helps me a lot because I don't want uh, because it gives me a bit of a gap during this area, and when price starts to slow down near the peak, then I have a lot more trades and they're closer together, meaning I need less of a pullback from here in order to close out and profit. All right, so it's it's a little bit. These times are a little bit scary because I don't really want to be in any trades tomorrow uh, during Big Thursday. Now, if you guys don't know what this is about, that's what the rumor of Big Thur what they're calling it, Big Thursday, um, and this is what's going on. So you have the inflation report, the uh, bank rate, uh, which is expected to be uh, to rate to to rise. They they are expect the analysts are saying that they think that they are going to raise the interest rate. Uh, policy uh, summary, official official rate. As you can see, they're thinking that is going to increase, and, uh, and these are the votes. And uh, looks like they're thinking that it's pretty close to unanimous, but uh, at least it's uh, 
I think that's what that number reads. And but they, the biggest thing is is they do think that it's going to the rate's going to increase. <clears throat> now I think that it's it's that this isn't going to happen. The, the the analyst prediction is is wrong. I don't think that they're going to raise interest rates. Now just because I'm calling that doesn't mean it's 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 going to happen. Um, and uh, I typically like to write against what the analysts are thinking. So if they're predicting this, I usually will go the opposite direction because in most cases in in trading, the unexpected happens. Um, and so I don't think that they will raise. And even if they do, there's going to be, I think that the pound <clears throat> uh, going up will be limited because of uh, what circumstances uh, follow with a raised interest rate. I think that it's too soon to raise interest rates. The uh, UK is still in talks with the uh, with, uh, European Union on Brexit plans and how much money is going to be involved in, in paying debt. And th th that kind of unknown is, I think, going to put a lot of pressure on a raised interest rate and a, uh, a lot of question in if that is actually a good decision or not. So I, th I think that the likelihood of a of the pound falling in a big way is 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 more than uh, the pound jumping uh, in a, in a big way tomorrow. Um, I'm not going to play this uh, like, play it like that. I'm going to wait for me to in, uh, hit profit. I still have a bit more to go. I would guess that I need to price to hit about in this area probably uh, before I close out for profit. I do think this will continue down. I don't know how much. Um, I think it is limited until the news comes out. I do expect a pullback, and hopefully I can get out before it jumps back up and likely re could retest this upper area before the news comes out tomorrow. Uh, but I do think it will start to range and hopefully allow me uh, uh, to get out before it starts getting uh, the volume starts lowering uh, before uh, the dead time before the news uh, comes out. Okay, uh, so that's where I am with my trades right now. I might try to squeeze out a little bit more profit on my positions, on my personal trades. Right now, I'm shooting for $200, uh, and I might look for uh, close to $400, uh, 300, to, uh, 300 to 400 um, I'll just have to wait and see what, uh, how far and how, how fast this continues to move uh, before it starts slowing down. So I expect it to push down and then it will start to trickle and then the, typically it won't be a, a jagged edge. That's not usually how these things work um, and it hasn't been the case on the pullback so far on the, on the pound in recent, in recent history. Uh, for example, this shot up here, it slowed down at this point, it pushed back down for a pullback, went back up. This could have been a pullback area here, but it slowly but surely then broke up, waited for the news, news candle here, and shot up. And then it's been slowly pushing up and then dying out and then now pushing back down. So you'll see that that's a lot of times how price works. And so I'm expecting that this pullback will do some something similar and give me some hint of where I could get out either in profit or maybe in small loss. I don't know. Uh, so that's something that I'm going to have to wait and see. All right. Um, so I'm not sure when the next time I'm going to stream, but uh, I haven't had any profit on my personal account uh, this week so far. At least I don't think so. No, no profit this week. And so I'm hoping to come out with some profit today uh, with this trade. And then I might go on a small break until the uh, the pound news comes out. I don't think I'm gonna, I'm gonna trade that news. Um, I'm, I'm very tempted to do it uh, because I do think that the pound is gonna fall and I do think it's gonna fall in a big way. But, you know, there's always a 50-50% chance. It doesn't matter if I think this or think that uh, because it really, I could just be completely wrong. Um, and 
even the analysts, the analysts thinking that they're going to raise the rates, they could all be wrong as well because they they have they have data, but they still don't actually have the answer um, or to what's really going to happen. All right, so it's been a slow week. Um, can't really do much about that. I'm still on recovery on Robert's account, but I have talked to him about it, and uh, we I have decided to pull back on this account, let the expert advisor make slowly make back uh, the, the losses that occurred. And uh, I have talked uh, Robert into starting up an account at Trader's Way and um, potentially making some of the loss back at Trader's Way because of the leverage I can uh, have, I, I can trade my strategy at a bit higher risk because, because of the leverage, the 400 to one leverage at Trader's Way compared to the 50 to one leverage at Oanda gives us a little bit more, uh, I guess, ammo to work with uh, in trading. All right, so I'm going to wait to see what happens with uh, with this uh, pound Canadian dollar. Hoping to get out before before uh, the news on Thursday. Uh, will I hold if I'm not out? It's hard to say. Uh, I'm not I'm not huge on taking risks at this moment on my personal account uh, or on any account really. And uh, so I'm not sure if I'm going to hold through the news, even, do I, even though I think it will go down. Um, it's something that I'm going to have to think a little bit more about. Anyways, that's pretty much it for the update. I wanted to be short uh, today with it um, because nothing is really going on to, to talk much about. Uh, but I am still trading my strategy. I'm still looking for other strategies uh, to accommodate and work with the current one I have. Uh, or potentially, if it's better, even replace it. Um, right now, I'm really focusing on trying to develop a um, a really solid scalping method because I really don't like holding long periods of time in the market because I feel like the longer that you hold, for example, I've been in this for a few days now, the more likely things are to go against you. And so uh, that's why I'm looking for something that enters in and exits the market very, uh, very quickly. I know, I'm on to a few things. Uh, but they still need some modifications and it's a lot of work. It's going to probably be months, maybe years before I really find something that's solid long term. And when I say solid long term, I mean over 10, 15, maybe even 20 years of time um, uh, with a, a scalping strategy. Difficult because scalping strategies are usually more high risk. So we'll see how it goes. All right, guys, uh, that's it for today, and uh, hopefully I can give you a, an update uh, maybe uh, this, this coming Friday. Hope you guys have a great uh, rest of the week, and I'll see you later. Bye.